ready, which I think will be tomorrow, and he has to be prepared to do it one step at a time the way he did it here. He's running against the field constantly, not against one candidate. Sure, but the field is divided, so he ta he takes his yeah. his portion, and they're all kind of, uh, you but know, Kenny, going back to the not others. targeting one or the other with a message. He's going out there and running, putting the Romney message out and responding to the attacks he gets from them individually. From, from here on, does it become damaging if people stay in, even if it seems as though the train is uh, out of the station? Well, look, we've had one, one election. I mean, this is the only primary. The other was a caucus. So it's not unusual for people to stay in through two or three. What's going to make this hard is all the debates. Because, frankly, you can stay in this race as long as you keep enough money to buy a ticket to the next debate and show up. Actually, the media is going to have to start showing some discipline and putting a tougher set of criteria on who's allowed to be in or out of the debate, or you're going to have these guys ride the train all the way to June. Well, but you wouldn't object to that if your guy's strong. Doesn't it? Everybody says, oh, it makes it so much stronger if we can go to June. It just makes things more complicated. <laughs> you don't want a complication. I think we're hearing I think we're uh, perhaps the Canada. I'm going to throw it back to you, Wolf, but I think we're very near. Thanks so much, Thank Governor so Sununu. Appreciate it. All right, uh, Candy, uh, thanks very much. Uh, uh, we're going to hear Mitt Romney speak uh, in a moment, but right now we're ready, ready to make another projection. I see in our projects that Ron Paul, Ron Paul uh, is, uh, will come in second place in New Hampshire, uh, CNN projecting the Texas congressman will come in second right behind Mitt Romney. CNN also ready to project that John Huntsman will come in third in New Hampshire. John Huntsman, uh, the former Utah governor, the former U.S. ambassador to China, will come in third. Uh, you see uh, over there what's going on uh, in uh, uh, in uh, Mitt Romney's uh, headquarters. That's Ann Romney, the wife of Mitt Romney. I guess she's getting ready to introduce introduce uh, her uh, husband. You see the sons, the Romney sons, standing right behind her. There are so many uh, friends here. Uh, and by the way, at the bottom of the is. screen, you're going to see our focus group in South Carolina from Charleston, Tom Foreman's group of undecided Republicans in South Carolina. Uh, they're going to be uh, using their meters to tell us what they like, what they don't like. Uh, as Mitt Romney speaks, you'll see that, uh, the, that little squiggly line go up and down. In the meantime, let's listen in to Ann Romney. I just don't know where he went. <laughs> Senator Judd Gregg. <laughs> Congressman Charlie Bass. <laughs> they have spoken for us, and they have fought for us across the state. Thank you also, Mayor Ted Gatsis. Senate President Peter Bragdon, Jennifer Horn, and to the many state legislators and counselors who endorsed our campaign and have been tireless workers on our behalf. One state senator deserves special mention, Jeb Bradley. He's out there somewhere. He, he has fired up audiences for everywhere we go. Thanks to Ray Burton, Doug and Stella Scammon, Scott Hilliard, who have been there for us from the very beginning. We're grateful to the people who lead our campaign in New Hampshire. Jim Merrill. Yeah. Jason McBride and Tom Rath. Yeah. And a special thanks out to the thousands of volunteers who have devoted countless hours to our cause. Finally, we want to thank the people of New Hampshire. the active part of this democratic process. The ones we met by knocking on doors, visiting towns and cities throughout this great state, and who turned out to meet Mitt and me at one of our many events. And now, guess what I want to do? <laughs> I want to introduce the man who we all believe should be the next president of the United States, Mitt Romney.
history. <laughs> this state has always been a very special place for, uh, for our family. Ann and I have made a home here. We filled it with great memories of our children, our grandchildren. The Granite State moment we've just enjoyed is one we will always remember. And I have my five sons behind me and our daughters-in-law and grandkids somewhere around here. Where are they? They're right behind us. It's great to have family here. You know, tonight we celebrate. Tomorrow we go back to work. We, uh, we do remember when Barack Obama came to New Hampshire four years ago. He, uh, he promised to bring people together. He promised to change the broken system in Washington. He promised to improve our nation. Those were the days of lofty promises made by a hopeful candidate. Today, we're faced with the disappointing record of a failed president. The last three years have held a lot of change, but they haven't offered much hope. The middle class has been crushed. Nearly 24 million of our fellow Americans are still out of work, struggling to find work, or have stopped looking. The median income in America has dropped 10% in the last four years, and soldiers returning home from the front lines are waiting now in unemployment lines. Our debt's too high, and opportunities are too few. And this president wakes up every morning, looks out across America, and is proud to announce it could be worse. It could be worse? That is not what it means to be an American. It could be worse. Of course not. What, what defines us as Americans is our unwavering conviction that we know it must be better and it will be better. That conviction That conviction guides our campaign. It's rallied millions of Americans in every corner of this country to our cause. Over the last six months, I've listened to anxious voices in town halls and town meetings, visited with students and soldiers in break rooms and living rooms. I've heard stories of families getting by on less, of carefully planned retirements, now replaced with jobs at minimum wage. But even now, amidst the worst recovery since the Great Depression, I've rarely heard any speech of hopelessness. Americans know that our future is brighter and better than these troubled times. We, we still believe, we still believe in the hope, the promise, and the dream of America. We still believe in that shining city on a hill. We know that the future of this country is better than 8 or 9% unemployment. It's better than $15 trillion in debt. It's better than the misguided policies and broken promises of the last three years and the failed leadership of one man. The president has run out of ideas. Now he's running out of excuses. And tonight, Tonight, we're asking the good people of South Carolina to join the citizens of New Hampshire and make 2012 the year he runs out of time. Yeah. President, Obama, President Obama wants to put free enterprise on trial. And in the last few days, we've seen some desperate Republicans join forces with him. This is such a mistake for our party yeah. and, and for our nation. The country already has a leader who divides us with the bitter politics of envy. We have to offer an alternative vision. I stand ready to lead us down a different path where we're lifted up by our desire to succeed, not dragged down by a resentment of success. Yeah. It, and these, uh, In these, 
Uh, in difficult times, we can't abandon the core values that define us as a unique nation. We are one nation under God. Make no mistake, make no mistake, in this campaign, I will offer the American ideals of economic freedom a clear and unapologetic defense. Yes. And we're going to win with that message. Yes. But you know, you know that our campaign is about more than replacing a president. It's about saving the soul of America. Yes. This election is a choice between two very different destinies. President Obama wants to fundamentally transform America. We want to restore America to the founding principles that made this country great. Yeah. Hey, he wants to turn America into a European-style social welfare state. We want to ensure that we remain a free and prosperous land of opportunity. Yeah. This president takes his inspiration from the capitals of Europe. We look to the cities and towns across America for our inspiration. This president puts his faith in government. We put our faith in the American people. This president is making the federal government bigger, burdensome, and bloated. I will make the federal government simpler, smaller, and smarter. He raised the national debt. I will cut, cap, and balance the federal budget. He has enacted... This president... This president has enacted job-killing regulations. Yes. I'll eliminate them. He lost our AAA credit rating. Yes. I'll restore it. He passed Obamacare. I'll repeal it. Yes. And, when, and when it comes to the economy, my highest priority as president will be worrying about your job, not about saving my own. Internationally, internationally, President Obama has adopted an appeasement strategy. He believes America's role as leader in the world is a thing of the past. I believe a strong America must and will lead the future. He doesn't see the need for overwhelming American military superiority. I will insist on a military so powerful no one would ever think of challenging it. He criticizes our friends like Israel. I will always stand with our friends. Yeah. And he apologizes for America. And I will never apologize for the greatest nation in the history of the earth. Yeah. Plans, our plans protect freedom and opportunity, and our blueprint is the Constitution of the United States. Yeah. Now, the path I lay out is not one paved with ever-increasing government checks and cradle-to-grave assurances that government will always be the solution. If this election is a bidding war for those who can promise the most benefits, that I'm not your president. You already have that president. Yeah. If you want to make this election now about restoring American greatness, then I hope you'll join us. If you believe that the disappointments of the last few years are a detour, not a destiny, then I'm asking for your vote. I'm asking each of you to remember how special it is to be an American. Yeah. I want you to remember what it was like to be hopeful and excited about the future, not to dread each new headline. I want you to remember when you spent more time dreaming about where to 